AMT's classic 1953 Studebaker Starliner Coupe. Coming up next on What's in the Box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody, welcome back to Monster Hobbies What's in the Box. My name is Trevor Ursulescu and it's getting close to that Christmas season now. So, if you have a Studebaker fan on your Christmas wish list, you might want to try to find one of these great kits. And this is a good year for Studebaker because it is a totally redesigned car body and everything. This is a Lowry Coupe Studebaker Starliner, nice and low and sleek, and the aerodynamics were used a lot in drag racers. So now let's go down and check out this three-in-one kit. Yes, that's right, three different choices as we look at it on What's in the Box. And now we look at Studebaker's entry into 1953 with this opening of our AMT 53 Studebaker Starliner Coupe. Now, as I said earlier, this is a really cool car because it's brand new from uh, Studebaker Corporation for 1953. And here we go again. You know I bought this one a long time ago because, again, I've written, bought at Walmart for $9.96 on January 8th, 2004 in Okotoks. Now, this is 14 years ago, and model kit prices have really gone up since then. However, here's a history of the kit. And you're, you're about to see the most insane motor in all the plastic kits up to this point. I'm not talking about the stock and custom version of the Studebaker engine, which is unique on its own, because Studebaker was the first independent car company to have a V8 back in 1951. Now, this is what I'm talking about. There's the racing engine for this kit, and it is a Hemi, Chrysler Hemi. I think it's a 350 two or something, if I remember right, but it's got the dual blower set up on it with this big serpentine type belt. And it's really a cool kit to build to see that motor. And there's our Studebaker stock wheels, which are almost like baby moon hubcaps on there. And it again has posable wheels with a nice tie rod. And this is much like the 55 Chevy uh, Nomad kit, where you have the three heights to your front spindle, so you can raise it for drag racing, put it in the middle for stock, or lower it by putting it at the top. So that's always cool. It's just too bad the rear axle doesn't have uh, positions to it, but there it is there. And notice these big exhaust pipes for your racing dragster. They actually have separate cradle here to hold them in place. And then, of course, there's your mag wheels. And you get this nice dashboard and two choices of steering wheel with tachometer. And then a custom style interior panel, which has the console and the separate bucket seats. And then you get your racing version with a single bucket seat with seat belts and this nice roll cage. And then, of course, the stock one. And what's interesting is these cars were low, so they actually had your feet go through the floorboards, which was kind of cool. And then to cover that big racing motor, you get a clear hood with two side holes cut in it, as well as all the stock components. And custom, you can blank out the grill with the fillers. You can cut the top off and lower it with a special lowered top and glass. And then here's your car going together in its stock configuration. And then you got the custom configuration with independent front grills and other cool things. A solid core rear bumper. And then, of course, you can add all that stuff into your dragster. And there's those dual hood scoops going through that hood. Uh, this is actually, you could build it as a Salt Lake dragster as well. And then, of course, there's those decals going on. So now let's see the plastic in this kit. Actually, I'm going to start right with those decals. So you get pinstripes in black or silver, which is pretty nice. And here is your chrome. Again, I'm not going to take it out of the bag, so sorry about that with the writing. There's those Hemi heads. 
the custom inserts for your grills and the two blowers and everything that's cool about that as well as your custom bumper with the tail lights put in there looking at the back look at how big those uh, wheels are at the back that's crazy super deep su super sunken in you get two clear parts one is of course the windshield the chopped windshield and then the hood actually there should be three bags of clear for the stock maybe I'll find it look at those tires holy smokes so there's the drag tires as well as your Firestone um, narrow ones and red, red taillights. Okay, there's our Studebaker body. And not going to take it out of the bag again. Oh, here's a clear side. But there is some nice details, including these little louvers on the side that were for cooling. I've got a 51 Studebaker, a real bullet nose at home. And it also has these little side doors. It's one of the luxuries of Studebaker, of course, to uh, vent out your car. Now here we go with the seats and the custom bits. And notice that nice tuck and roll upholstery on there. As well as the uh, front seats with that kind of upholstery. Very nice. Then here's our Studebaker hood, which was quite a good lowrider, salt flat racing type of aerodynamic hood. Roll bars and uh, rear brake drums, those seat belts. Here's the Chrysler motor. I mean, look at that, that's a big massive thing. It's funny it can go through this little teeny transmission though. All that power. And there is your steering wheel, the stock steering wheel. Here's some custom pieces in the back seat. There's that hood that's been lowered. This is a link shifter for shifting that big monstrous motor through the transmission. Here is the suspension pieces with the uh, posable steering. Then we have the Studebaker V8, which is quite a nice thing. Back in its day, it was used in racing and won a few things too. And then here's the drag racing seat, that nice detail in there, as well as our dashboard and racing steering wheel. And here is the actual glass for your windshield and rear window. There's the interior tub, which unfortunately you've got to paint and chrome down there. But there's those seats, no, or not seats, but that's for your feet to go under the front seat because they wanted that low sleek look back then and last but not least is our undercarriage it's all hollow under there uh, and that concludes our look at the 1953 studebaker starliner coupe by amt well, I hope you got a good look at what's in the box this time around as we examine the 1953 Studebaker Starliner Coupe by AMT Ertl. And if you would like to check out other videos in this series, please check here, here, and here. And don't forget to like and subscribe to us right down here. And check out our website, www.monster-hobbies.ca, for more model car fun. Till next time, have a good one.